Hey, what's up guys? It's Beja at Baker Hill Farm. You might be able to hear my kids in the background. It is a very dreary and rainy day today. We're all stuck inside. So that's why I'm doing this video. Um, this is by far going to be my favorite like DIY teaching series on the channel, but I have put it off and put it off and put it off this long because it's going to take a lot of effort on my part to teach this because I want to do it well. I want to be thorough and I want you guys to learn how to sew. This is going to be a teaching series where I'm teaching you how to sew with a sewing machine. I'm going to have projects on the channel. I'll have shorts that are also projects. So just like for starting, just very simple projects to begin with. But first things first, we are going to talk about a sewing machine. I'm going to give you the basics. I'm going to have some sewing machines linked down in the description that are affordable and good quality machines. The machine I have here, this exact model, you can't really find it on Amazon. It's no big deal. Honestly, if I were going to go back and start again, I would have definitely got a machine that did not have so many stitches. You can see these are all the stitches that my machine comes with. And when I was first starting out, it was very overwhelming. Um, and I just felt like it was going to be unattainable to ever use those stitches. And honestly, guys, I have not even used a quarter of them. I use the same stitches over and over again. I'm going to tell you what the most useful stitches are, all the things. So let's get into this video. Okay, so here is my sewing machine. I have a brother. It's the Project One Runway Limited Edition. This uh, machine is sold at Walmart. I'm not sure if they still have this exact one, but like I said, I'm going to have some machines linked below that are a really good price and probably better suited for just starting out. So first things first, not all machines are the exact same, but there's several similarities so that you can kind of learn the basics just by this video. First things first, you want to turn your machine on. So my machine power is over here on the side. Um, I recommend uh, making sure that your presser foot is hooked up. So here's mine, complete with electrical tape from when I accidentally cut it. And I have a desk here that was Nana's and the, um, the cord feeds through a hole in the back and then it comes up behind the machine and clips in right there. Okay, so now my machine is on up here you can see this is where I can change my different stitches. So I'm on zero, zero. That means my stitch is gonna look like this right here. My needle is gonna be on the left side um, and that is my where my stitch is gonna be. It's gonna be on the left side. So here's my needle. Let me put my hand behind it so you can see it. It's on the left side. Let's say I wanted my, I can just show you the orientation. So this is the left side. If I wanted it to be in the center, I could go to one. And when I did that, it just clicked over just a little bit to move my needle. So this is just where you pick what stitch you want. Now, if you have a more simple machine like the ones I'm going to link, it may be a dial and it may show you, um, it's probably just going to have these straight stitches and then it will have some zigzag on there. It'll just be a dial you turn. Now, this over here indicates my stitch length. So this is like when I'm stitching in a line, it will be how long or short my stitches are. This is a very short length. It's just kind of the, what do you call it? Default stitch. I can go up to get a longer length. It goes to five. And then the smallest I can go is really, really small. This is very, very small. That's not coming out. Very tiny stitch. I usually just sew on 2.5 unless I'm doing like a heavier fabric. Now this right here is how wide your stitch is. So it really doesn't matter with these straight stitches. But if you're doing a zigzag stitch, you can make this stitch wider or more narrow by using this um, setting here. Okay, now right here on the machine, this is your wheel. I forget what the technical name is. I just call it my wheel. It's like a needle wheel. Whenever you turn this, you are actually manually sewing with your needle. One thing to know is you always want to turn your wheel towards you. Now I'm going to turn it towards me and I want you to watch what the needle does goes down, comes back up. That was a stitch. Okay. So this is how you can do a manual stitch. It's also how you pick your needle up after you've been sewing for some time. Now down here, 
This is your presser foot, okay? You can actually take this off with this little button here because depending on the stitch you're using, you may need a different presser foot. Now, if you're doing these basic stitches like uh, zero, one, three, and four, you will just need the same, a basic presser foot. This is a J presser foot. So I just recommend sticking with the basics to begin with because you can literally sew clothes and so many things with that. You don't need, you don't need to switch it. You'll really start s switching your uh, presser foot when you are getting into like adding in zippers and things like that. So this is how you lower and raise your presser foot. So you can pick it up a little higher than it already goes. If say you're trying to get out like denim, denim, and then that's how you let it down. Okay, so some other things you need to know is your machine will come with these little items here. This is a bobbin. Um, and this is what you need to put in the bottom of your machine. If y'all knew, I just told y'all how to wind the bobbin and all that, and I wasn't even recording. <laughs> this is why I have waited for a rainy day to do this video. So here we go. Let's start over. So your machine is going to come with these little clear things. You might get metal if you have um, this is a really nice machine. Mine were clear. And honestly, the ones that have come with my machine are the best to use with my machine. They're supposed to be like one size fits all for most of them. But the aftermarket ones, uh, they honestly don't work as well and they look like they should. So it's kind of a peculiar situation, but that's just the way it is. So before you even thread your machine, I'm going to teach you how to wind your bobbin. And I'm going to teach you how to do it if you have like an electric machine like this. You can wind your bobbin by hand, but ain't nobody got time for that when I can use my machine. Okay, so right here is where you want to put your thread. This actually will fold up. So if you are, you know, taking your machine somewhere, you can just fold that up. But you just want to put it out. I thread mine like this. I put my thread on with the thread going under. It is not the same as toilet paper, okay? We're doing a different situation than we would with toilet paper. And now most machines have a guide here on the top. So I'm just going to follow this guide, which tells me that I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to loop it in this clip here, as indicated. I'm going to wrap it around this little arm, and then I am going to wrap it around this little hook, around my knob. I don't know what this is called. And then take it all the way to my bobbin. So let's do that. Okay, so taking my thread, clipping it in the clip, wrapping it under this little arm, around this little hook, around this little whatever that is. I don't know. And then you're going to put your bobbin will have like a little hole in it. See that little hole right there? That's where your thread's going to go in. You can tell. I know so many technical names, don't I? Not really. You're going to clip it on right there. And then you're going to push this over until it clicks. Okay, now your machine knows that if you press the presser foot, this is going to spin and your needle is not going to move. So it has to click. So while holding my string up, and I'll tell you why I do that in a minute, I'm going to push the, um, push the presser foot, not the presser foot, my sewing pedal, like my, my sewing pedal thing, my pedal. I'm going to push my pedal down, <laughs> let it wrap a few times, and then stop. Now, now that it's wrapped a few times, I'm going to find my scissors, and I'm going to clip this string. Okay, found my scissors, clipping the string, and now I'm going to press my pedal again until it winds all the way up and stops. See how it stopped? I did not do that. So now I'm going to clip my thread. I'm going to clip this thread. And we have a wound bobbin. Look at that. Nice, huh? Okay, so before we thread the machine, we're going to get our bobbin and we're going to put it in the case. So hold your bobbin like this and you want it to kind of look like a pea. So do you see the top of the pea here? And then I have the stem of the pea on the left side. 
P for perfect. We are gonna perfectly put this bobbin in, okay? So set your bobbin in, in a P formation. And once you can see more instructions. Isn't this so nice? You're just gonna wrap your thread under this little arm and it's gonna go in this little pathway up this little avenue and very conveniently for my machine is a blade here and this is just gonna cut that thread, that excess thread off and I'm done. I have placed my bobbin into the bobbin case and put the lid on. Now let's thread the machine. Okay, so time to thread the machine. So remember we have it wrapped around this little hook. We don't need that unless we are winding the bobbin. We do want it in that clip that was on the back side. See my clip? And I do want it under this arm. Now the awesome thing is your machine, most machines have little numbers. So we've done the first step already. Now we go to the second step and so forth. So I'm just gonna do the steps and you can just watch me. So I lead it down this pathway up under this pathway and back up this pathway. Now in this pathway, in this last piece here, there is, see that little piece of metal right here? I want to hook my thread onto that hook. So I'm just gonna come up and to the left and go down and it's hooked on. You know it's hooked on because um, part of it stays up while you're pulling down. And now we are actually going to thread our needle. Now, a lot of machines now come with an automatic needle threader. That's what this is. You just, you're supposed to wrap it around somehow and push it down or whatever. I don't use it. It's, it's honestly finicky. Every time I've tried to use it, it doesn't really work well. So I just thread it, auto, just thread it myself. Um, there's another little clip here right above where your needle goes. And you want to clip your thread into that. So after your thread is clipped into that, I'm gonna put the presser foot down so I can see the eye a little better. And I'm just going to put my thread right through the eye of my needle, bring it out the back of the needle and pick my presser foot up. And I'm gonna put my thread under the presser foot and pull it out the back and then put my presser foot down. You actually don't even have to put your thread through the presser foot. I do it just because it kind of keeps it secure. Um, if I'm moving around or like pushing fabric around, I don't have to worry about this becoming too short because once you're sewing, if you clip it too short um, towards the needle and don't give yourself a long tail, then it's gonna come out the next time you try to sew and you're gonna have to rethread your machine and that's super annoying. Now, one thing I didn't cover um, is actually putting a needle into your machine. So right here, you have this little um, hook. Now, your machine will probably come with a piece where you can unscrew this, but honestly, just use a penny. You can use a penny to unscrew any screw on the face, like this bottom portion um, of your machine. But you'll just, your machine will come with needles. You'll make sure that this isn't tight. You'll slip the needle in there and then you'll screw it back tight. Okay guys, so if you have your machine set up, we've threaded it, we put our bobbin in, our needle's secure. We're ready to sew. We're actually ready to sew. Isn't that so exciting? So we are gonna go over the next sewing project in the next video. If you um, don't wanna wait around for the next video, go ahead and get you a piece of fabric and just run it through here on a straight stitch and practice some straight stitches. Get the feel of how it feels to push the fabric through. Another thing that I did not cover is here on your machine, under your presser foot, you have these little teeth. These are your feed dogs, okay? You want those up. So back here, is this little indicator it tells you here my feed dogs would be down and it would be flat and here it's they're up the teeth are up you want the teeth up because this is what is grabbing your fabric and pushing it forward as you're sewing i've honestly never used a machine with the feed dogs down i guess you would if maybe you were using silk and you didn't want to snag it or something i've just never come across a time to do that one time though, years ago, before I really knew how to sew because I taught myself how to sew, 
is I borrowed somebody's machine. I was like, I'm going to learn how to sew, blah, blah, blah. Kept using the machine, kept using the machine. I'm like, this machine does not work. I mean, I threaded it. I read all the instructions. I'm pushing the fabric through. Nothing's working. The fabric's not going anywhere. It's just sitting there. Took her back her machine. I'm like, girl, your machine is broken. She wasn't worried about it because she didn't use it. So she just, you know, put it away somewhere. The whole time, the feed dogs were down. So don't be like me and do that, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are going to love this series. I know I'm going to have fun uh, recording it. I've got the worst of it out of the way, which was teaching you how to set up your machine because it was so many like close-up shots and all of that. But um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited to learn this new skill. It's awesome. This is such an awesome thing to learn. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!